Uh, hello, the title of this course is uh, Compliant Mechanisms, Principles and Design Techniques. Let me first start uh, with what a compliant mechanism is. A compliant mechanism is a mechanism which is central to all machinery or even living organisms because a mechanism is supposed to transmit a transform force. So, wherever there is motion and uh, uh, motion force energy uh, transmission or transformation you would need a mechanism. A compliant mechanism does that, but it does that with a small difference. The difference is that without elastic deformation it will not be able to move. It will be more like a structure, a structure that civil engineers deal with bridges, buildings and so forth. They are not supposed to deform under loads, they have to be static and uh, not move at all. As opposed to that, we have rigid body mechanisms where there are rigid bodies which are also stiff, but they are connected with joints in order to generate motion and uh, hence transmit or transform force, motion and energy. So, we have one extreme which is structures which are not supposed to move at all and the other extreme we have rigid body linkages which are supposed to move and do this purpose of transmitting their purpose is transmit force, motion and energy. In this uh, between the structures and uh, mechanisms, rigid body mechanisms, we have a continuous spectrum and this spectrum is occupied by what we can call compliant mechanisms. They have the properties of both the structures as well as rigid body mechanisms and hence we benefit by studying the principles in the structural design and the rigid body linkage design and design these compliant mechanisms. This is exactly what we will do in this course by looking at uh, the principles of structural design starting from their mobility criteria, look at the mobility in the rigid body linkages and uh, try to see how we can extend that to compliant mechanisms. After mobility, we will also discuss analysis. Analysis of structures can be done using fine entanglement analysis, boundary element method and mechanisms we can do using algebraic uh, techniques that are there to analyze mechanisms. There will be a lot of trigonometric quantities, it um, amounts to solving algebraic equations, we can do that. When it comes to compliant mechanisms, it becomes a little different. Of course, we can use fine entanglement analysis to analyze compliant mechanisms just as we analyze structures, but that may not be sufficient in the sense that uh, gaining insight into how compliant mechanisms move and behave may not be possible to gain through pure finite element analysis. So, we look at uh, some analytical solutions which are uh, based on elliptic integrals uh, where beam like elements or rather, rather slender beams that comprise a compliant mechanism in 2D or 3D, how they deform under large displacement conditions hence are nonlinear. we look at it analytically gain some insights into how this beam based compliant mechanisms actually work. So, we look at the analysis and then we move on to design. In this course, we are going to look at uh, 6 classes of design techniques. The two are very popular which are one are uh, taken from uh, structural design, other are taken from the mechanism rigid body linkage uh, technique based on what is called a pseudo rigid body model where we model a compliant mechanism like a rigid body linkage with springs and use all the things available in the mechanism literature and design them that is one technique. The second technique is we go to structural optimization where we can look at uh, the size, shape and topology optimization and try to design as well. We look at these, but they are not the only tweeting techniques that are available. Recently, there are many more techniques that are developed and we look at them also. The third technique we learn will be based on uh, what are called spring labor models and spring mass labor models based on selection maps uh, technique. And then there is non dimension analysis that is another technique, fourth technique. And then we have fifth technique which is based on building blocks using compliant ellipsoids. The sixth technique which is very amenable for basically doing on paper using instant center method and a few other miscellaneous methods we will discuss. And then application of compliant mechanisms are quite a few. 
starting from uh, protein design that is at nano scale, you can go to cell level and uh, the tissue level, organ level, organism level, there are a lot of applications and in automotive, aerospace, consumer products, biomedical products, all of these and especially micro electromechanical systems where you can make miniaturized tools because compliant mechanisms do not have joints, their manufacturability is uh, very good because you do not need to assemble parts that is useful for uh, miniature applications where microfabrication does not uh, need assemblies, these are perfect for that. And now with the 3D printing additive manufacturing uh, coming over, compliant mechanisms assume newer or increased significance because uh, you can make things without assembly and uh, they move because elastic formation get you what uh, you want. Essentially whatever rigid body linkages can do, one can uh, get here. So, in a sense in this course what we will do is uh, look at structures and compliant mechanisms in a unified way to understand uh, compliant mechanisms. In a way all mechanisms books may have to be rewritten by looking through the lens of compliant mechanisms because we combine the structural approach and rigid body linkage approach into one and that is what we will do. Along the way we will learn a lot of design techniques, understand some principles and also appreciate some applications of a compliant mechanisms. Into the prerequisites for this course, uh, if one knows already mechanism uh, analysis and design that is what we call kinematics and a uh, little bit of optimization, but that is not a prerequisite for this course, but it will help to follow certain portions of the course better and familiarity with finite element analysis will be useful. Again that is something that uh, is not essential, but certain portions can be followed better if we have that. Other than that the real prerequisite is that you should be able to uh, visualize a, a different if I may call paradigm of uh, machinery or machine design where you intentionally use elastic deformation in order to get the transmission or transformation of force, energy and uh, motion and that is what this course will be about.